RealArtCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. Okay, it's time for another episode of Under the Microscope. I'm here with Holly Gellich. We are going to talk about dormancy. So into the harvest season, crops coming off, um, some, some are sending in samples straight off the combine. Um, what exactly causes dormancy? Why is it going to be an issue, potentially? Well, dormancy really causes uh, the seed not to germinate under ideal conditions. So these are seeds that are fully intact. Um, from the outward appearance, they are fully mature, so they're not filled with greens, not filled with sprouts, etc. But it's basically an intact, viable seed that is not germinating or sprouting under ideal conditions. Okay, and what conditions um, tend to uh, increase the rate of dormancy? So uh, dormancy is induced by a number of factors. Uh, one of them are the, the crop species itself. So wheat is one of those and barley that, that is somewhat susceptible to dormancy. So you have the crop type. Um, some varieties also we do see in the lab have a little bit more tendency to be dormant than the next. But more so than not, it's primarily the conditions. So it's conditions in the field during the filling period. So during the filling period, if it's cool and a very long, prolonged cool period, you'll see higher dormancy. Um, also, if uh, during the harvest period, there's a lot of, uh, of moisture, but not enough to induce sprouting, but enough to hold back the crop and not actually get to its physiological maturity when it wants to during that quick dry down stage. So that can also induce dormancy. Now, dormancy is really thought of as a seed coat uh, difficulty in the fact that there's different types of, of enzymes and proteins in the seed coat. So if it becomes imbalanced, then the kernel itself won't actually germinate. It will hold itself back until there's a proper balance of the various different um, growth, growth hormones within the, the seed coat and the outer hull of the kernel itself. Okay, so now if farmers are sending in, in samples, um, is there anything that, because obviously in the lab you have ways and means to sort of break that dormancy to give a, a more accurate picture of the actual germination of, of a seed lot. Is there anything farmers can do to help that along or help you guys out before it gets to you? Well, we primarily say is to get your seed test done, you know, hopefully after harvest. That's the best time to get it done. Now, uh, some of the older recommendations have been throw it in the freezer, throw it in the fridge, um, just so that it could start some of that physiological maturity, uh, that process that is required in order to break the dormancy. So you, farmers can do that, but we do recommend getting it to our lab within about the first, uh, you know, six weeks or so after harvest. Now, in our lab, we do have various tools that the CFI allow us to break dormancy, but we don't use those until we start seeing dormancy. So right now, when samples come to us, new crops, we're not putting any growth hormones in our treatments at all until we start seeing a lot of fresh seeds. So dormant seeds are pretty much the same thing as fresh seeds, where the kernels themselves are imbibing the moisture, so they're starting to swell. So after the seven day period, you can see that they're swelling, but they're not sprouting. And that's therefore dormancy. So if, if we don't see any of that, then we don't use any prescribed methods, but typically we do, do use them. Now there's two products that we're allowed to use, and that is uh, KNO3, which is potassium nitrate. And that is the most common one. There is also another one, another one called gibberellic acid, and we tend not to use that, but it's primarily KNO3 that we utilize within our lab. Okay, so realistically, farmers, even if they maybe conditions were right for dormancy, they don't need to worry about throwing it in the freezer or doing any sort of chilling or anything like that. Just send it to the lab and you'll be able to get a gauge of what's dormant and what's non-viable versus and to work it all through. Absolutely, for okay. sure. So. Um, that would be our recommendation going forward. We do hope we don't see a lot of dormancy. Uh, last year there was a bit, but two years ago we had tremendous dormancy. And it, uh, that year it lasted right up to spring seeding. Uh, mm -hmm. But most years you will see dormancy within the first couple months. And then it starts to wane off, which is typical in that January, February time period. Right. And that's maybe that's sort of my last sort of question is if farmers are sending in seed right off the combine or within the month, of ending harvest and there is dormancy there, 
it's it's something to note, but should farmers worry about it then? Would you retest in the spring? Uh, we will definitely report uh, right on our certificate that there's dormancy suspected. And that will be in the fresh seed column within the report of analysis. So it, we definitely our clients will know what is going on, why the germination is low. And then that recommendation is, is usually sample over the Christmas holidays or just in the beginning of January, get us a sample of January and more than likely that dormancy will have waned. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Holly. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Take care. You too.